Hello everyone. Uh, it's um, uh, November the 15th, Sunday, about 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon, and it's time for another discussion about the winter 2015-2016 uh, uh, from uh, DelrayVAweather.com. And uh, today I'm going to go over a few things that I, uh, I've been doing a lot of research over the last week. And I uh, found out uh, some interesting things. The uh, chart that you see up on the um, on the screen is you've seen before in uh, previous uh, videos. This is something I did about a month or so ago uh, from data uh, that I was able to obtain daily uh, weather data from um, uh, Reagan National Airport uh, from January the first, 1980, through February the 28th. Uh, uh, 2014 and uh, what in making this chart what I did is I looked split the uh, the data into two pieces uh, as far as the winter months are concerned uh, those winters that had El Nino's and those weather uh, winters that had uh, no El Nino's and I was actually surprised to find that when we have an El Nino uh, winter in the DC area we tend to get a larger seasonal snowfall. Um, this really shows that we, uh, in uh, El Nino winters, we usually get about 22 inches. Um, the, um, uh, the seasonal average uh, since 1981 uh, for Reagan is 15 inches. So whenever we have an El Nino, we get above average uh, snowfall. Now, that actually surprised me. And so in the last few days, I've, I've been doing some research to find out if any other researchers have found uh, similar evidence. And actually, I found quite a few scientific papers that support this position. Now, uh, before we get to the papers, what I want to go over is where are the, the, um, the places where the storms, the large snowstorms are born that drop a lot of snow in the DC area. And there are basically three places uh, where uh, lows form and, and eventually they have the potential of producing large snowfall. Um, one is in the Gulf of Mexico uh, down south. This is, uh, it's called the Gulf Low. It uh, often develops uh, during the winter and the general track is up the east coast or inland. Uh, El, during El Nino years, this tract is usually followed. It's more of the along the coast rather than the inland uh, route. There's another uh, area off the Florida coast, the Florida Gulf Stream low, and um, often uh, lows will form there and uh, come up the uh, east coast from there. And finally, the traditional area for our large snowstorms or the northeasters. They generally form uh, somewhere, uh, you know, sometimes as far south as the uh, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina border, or all the way up off the coast of, uh, of Virginia, and move up towards the uh, northeast. And they, they often produce the really big storms uh, with uh, lots of snow, high winds, a uh, lot of uh, uh, beach erosion. So those are the three places that you should keep an eye on uh, throughout the winter. Okay, this is a, a research paper that I found uh, in the last three or four days. Uh, it's uh, Seeger et al. The title of the paper is Northern Hemisphere Winter Snow Anomalies, uh, ENSO, NAO, and the Winter of 2009-10. That's the Snowmageddon winter. Uh, ENSO is, is basically El Nino. Uh, it was published in the uh, Geophysical Research Letters. Now what uh, this chart shows, what the person did is they correlated large snowfalls or uh, unusually departures from, from uh, normal uh, snowfalls <clears throat> from December, December through March, uh, that's the snow season that was taken from 1950 to 1999, quite a large sampling. And um, whenever they correlated uh, with uh, above average snow, 
a, a blue circle was made. Uh, whenever they did not correlate, uh, uh, the uh, orange uh, circle was made. And um, uh, the size of the circle is depend it, it sort of depended on how well it correlated. Now, if you look here, uh, over here, this is a correlation with just El Nino. You see a lot of blue right in this mid-Atlantic region. Uh, when you get into the central part of the United States, there was very little correlation with El Nino. But right in this uh, sweet spot, there was pretty high correlation. There was less correlation south, less correlation north. So uh, this actually suggests that El Nino has a un uniquely greater snowfall uh, in this mid-Atlantic re region. And uh, the region is approximately uh, 37.5 degrees and 42.5 degrees north latitude and 80 degrees uh, to 73 degrees west longitude. And uh, that's the sort of a drawing a box around where all this blue is. And when you look at that, the cities in that box, the cities within, within this box are Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Maryland, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and um, uh, New York City, New York. Believe it or not, Boston, Massachusetts may actually be outside this box. It's right on the edge. So um, the, uh, the Boston area and north actually have uh, uh, El Nino has a different effect on those areas. Now, the, the researcher also uh, did a correlation whenever an El Nino occurred and negative NAOO, that's the North Atlantic Oscillation. And that's one of the indices I've mentioned before in past videos. It has to do where, uh, where the low pressure, um, okay, we'll see what happens here. Uh, where the low pressure uh, area occurs in the uh, uh, North Atlantic. And when that happens, when you have both an El Nino and a negative NAO in the, in the winter season, he's basically taking negative NAO, uh, the average of what the NAO is in September, October, and November. So that's, that sets whether it's a negative or positive NAO. And when that happens, you have a much larger effect for uh, uh, large uh, snowy uh, uh, winters. Um, it's pretty much the same place as we have here, but it extends down into the southeast more. Not so much along the coast, but significantly down uh, the, uh, into the uh, central uh, southeast. Okay. Now, uh, I want to go back and uh, uh, so ba basically what that that's telling us is the research that I came up with independent of this paper uh, actually fits, is that uh, El Nino has uh, very localized effects, different unique effects in the mid-Atlantic region and different er areas of the country. It has totally different effects. So in fact, uh, El Nino does seem to produce larger snowfalls in the mid-Atlantic region, where it doesn't have as much of an effect in other areas uh, of the uh, uh, eastern part of the United States. OK, I just wanted to review this, because we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the positioning of the El Nino. And again, uh, when we have a traditional El Nino, and that's El Nino where the warmest uh, uh, um, deviations from normal is over in this uh, area off of uh, the South American uh, Pacific coast, you actually get warmer temperatures in the uh, northern half of the United States compared to normal. And uh, in the mid-Atlantic area, we're about normal. But that other part of that sweet spot I just showed you actually is above normal. However, when you have a hybrid uh, uh, El Nino, and we're talking about hybrid being in uh, this labeled as uh, Nino 3, uh, you start getting colder areas uh, in, along the eastern seaboard uh, compared to normal. Now, the, the chart that we looked at earlier um, uh, from the researcher, actually they were taking a, a, the 
El Nino or Nino 3.4 figures, which is the coldest uh, configuration of the the El Nino, <clears throat> often referred to as a Modoki uh, El Nino, and you get much, much, much colder along the uh, the eastern United States. Again, uh, you need two things: moisture and low temperatures below freezing to have accumulating snowfall. So this has the uh, the potential when you have a Modoki El Nino to have the most snowfall, and so that's what the researchers were picking. Okay, so what I did, um, I went back because I, I wanted to see why some of these strong El Ninos uh, uh, that we had produce so little snow, and while others, uh, very strong El Ninos, produced a lot more snow than normal. And so what I did is I, I analyzed the El Nino years as compared to various indices. The two indices that I looked at was the PNA, I mentioned that before, it's the uh, Pacific North American Index, and the NAO, that's the North Atlantic Oscillation. Now, most meteorologists will tell you that when the NAO is minus, uh, you have a, a much larger chance uh, for big snows along the East Coast. It means colder weather and therefore you you get uh, more uh, more snows but in my research i t i sort of saw that really the correlation seemed to be more that if if the uh, nao was positive exactly opposite to what you know, a lot of meteorologists would tell you though that's when we got the bigger snows particularly in el nino years so that's basically what this analysis is trying to figure out why that seemed to be occurring and I think I have an answer. Um, what this is looking here, we are only looking at the difference between plus NAO and minus NAO uh, for El Nino years, only El Nino years. And we see that when we have a plus uh, NAO compared to a minus NAO, we actually show more snow. That's exactly opposite to what most meteorologists have been, been saying. And uh, so again, that's a very puzzling thing. Okay, what I did next was I, I analyzed the El Ninos that had plus PNA and negative NAO and plus PNA and positive NAO. And that's what you see over in this region. <clears throat> in this situation, with a plus PNA and a minus NAO, you got more snow. That fits with what most meteorologists will tell you. Minus NAO, you get more snow. But what the difference between this and this, where this is showing lower NAO, leads me to believe that the, the plus PNA trumps negative or positive NAO. It means that the, the PNA has much larger effect in the Washington DC area than whatever the sign may be for NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation. And that's, that oscillation is set based upon uh, positions of low uh, between uh, basically the Azores and, and uh, Greenland. So um, uh, that sort of explains why we, uh, wh why I was seeing uh, higher snow level levels even with a plus NAO. It's because at those higher snow levels you had a positive PNA. And this, this, is, this is kind of interesting. This is um, the, the combination of the two that should produce the smallest amount of snow. A negative PNA and a positive NAO. And in fact, it does. It has, it shows five inches, which is much below the 15.1 inch uh, uh, normal um, amount. Okay, so um, the October uh, 2015 uh, PNA and NAO, PNA was plus, NAO was plus, and it suggests that the 2015-16 uh, uh, DC winter 
will have substantially above average snowfall. It's not going to be the highest, because the highest would be uh, plus PNA minus uh, NAO. But it's going to be up there. It's going to be in the neighborhood of uh, right here, saying 25 inches. Um, but you need to keep in mind, this is an average figure. Sometimes it's going to be less. Sometimes it's going to be more. And so let me show you this. OK, this is breaking out all of the years that met the condition of plus PNA plus NAO, along with the, uh, the year date and how much snow we got. OK, uh, if you look at, at uh, this uh, list, we had two of those years, 69-70 uh, winter and the 76-77 uh, winter, that had less than average snow. It had, one year had 14 inches, one year had 11.1 .1 inches. Uh, so you can't be guaranteed we're going to get above 15 or 18 inches. But the tendency is to get above the average. Um, in fact, if you look at, there's a total, uh, let me see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 um, members in this combination. 78% of the members have above average snowfall. So that's suggesting that certainly it's, be it's better than flipping a coin that we're going to have above average snowfall. It's, it's pretty, pretty good odds that we're going to have above average snowfall. OK, I'm going to show you one other um, analysis. This is an interesting uh, study that was done by uh, by two researchers uh, back, uh, back in 2000 and 2007, in which they attempted to come up with an indicator of whether we were going to have uh, a, a more uh, East Coast uh, winter storms or less East Coast winter storms. And um, so this is a, a this site. This is actually a screen capture of a site at Cornell University where they they are running this uh, uh, this uh, project. And what this uh, person did, or these researchers did, is they es established an, uh, uh, indices based upon uh, southeast coast ocean temperatures compared to Gulf ocean temperatures. And the crazy thing about this is they're talking about what those temperatures were in the previous winter. That is more than 12 months from the, the forecast winter. And this is the correlation that they uh, they came up with. Not bad. It's got some uh, some errors, but uh, it does suggest if you see this little black dot right in this area, it, we are in the high activity region of the chart, and so uh, that also fits in with with um, my analysis and some of the other researchers' analysis that uh, this uh, winter has the characteristics of being above average snowfall. OK, I'm going to wrap it up there. And uh, sorry it's a, such a long-winded uh, uh, video. I, I have a lot of stuff I, I want to cover, and I, I want to give all the, all the details of the logic. But if you have any questions, give me a tweet, at Pat Penn, that's P-A-T-P-E-N-D, and I'll try and answer them. Thanks a lot.